Hi there. The purpose of this video is just to show you a demonstration of what can happen when you have leaky capacitors. Now, when we do any kind of work on old gear, especially tube gear, one of the warnings uh, is to be very careful with old capacitors, swap them out. There is an ongoing argument about how you shouldn't just arbitrarily swap out all the capacitors. And uh, to a degree, yes, they probably are right. What I want to show you here is an instance where I made the wrong assumption about the condition of the caps based on the tests of a few that I had done and then got a rather surprising result when I switched it on for testing. Let me go into just a quick look at the schematic and describe to you what it is I'm talking about. Now here's a circuit of the output stage, the audio stage of this uh, tube radio. It's a low opter Ryan Pearl type 5717W. And while working on this stage, this problem came to light. This is the output stage circuit. You've got a triode preamp stage here. It then feeds the signal through to that part of the circuit. That part of the circuit does some tone shaping and then it goes to the grid of the power tube, which is an EL84. Now, what this capacitor does is it couples the signal between this stage and that stage. Now, the difference between these two stages is their DC voltage condition. That point over there comes from the B+, plus, comes from the high voltage. So it does have high voltage, which then feeds the anode of the tube. But superimposed on that DC high voltage is our audio signal. We want that audio signal to get through, but we don't want any DC to get through. The reason being, we want this point here, which is the grid of the EL84, to be at zero volts. How do we get zero volts there? Well, first of all, we isolate it from the high voltage on that side. The signal, audio signal comes through here. There's some tone shaping over here and it meets a one mega ohm resistor to ground. And then there's this 1K resistor grid stopper. But effectively, ignoring the grid stopper for now, this one mega ohm resistor is the grid leak resistor, which basically ties the grid to ground to zero volts, making that effectively zero DC volts. How does this thing get biased? Well, what we need to, to do to bias this is to provide a negative voltage between the cathode and the grid. Now, if you've got zero volts on the grid, you need a positive voltage on the cathode because the voltage cathode to grid is the grid minus the cathode voltage. So it's zero minus, call it six volts is what it's supposed to be, 6.2, you get minus six. If you have minus six volts, you have a stable bias condition allowing a stable and predictable DC current to flow through there. That current is established by two things. One, this cathode resistor, which is 150 ohms, and two, the actual B plus that you have on your anode, your anode voltage. And that anode voltage comes through the transformer, the output transformer, which is effectively its load, and then goes to B plus down here, the higher voltage supply. You have zero there, which means that this tube has been controlled in terms of the current it's allowed to it's allowing to flow through a fixed bias current, you then are going to affect the current, the actual current flowing through by the amount of signal that you apply to the grid, the AC signal, the audio signal. Okay. But the audio signal should always be based around zero volts so that it either increases above the bias current or decreases below the set bias current. That is your signal, which your output transformer will see and translate into audio. What happens is that if this current here runs away with itself, in other words, if, if a condition establishes itself that allows this current to increase dramatically, you then have two problems. Your tube starts overheating. It can go beyond its power limit. And also you can actually burn out your output transformer because that current that the tube is allowing through is coming from your B plus through the output transformer. None of those conditions are particularly desirable. So what you need to make sure is that the voltage there, the DC voltage there is always at zero volts. And the way to do that 
is isolated from the previous section. Good. Now, why did I make such a rookie mistake? Well, I had removed quite a few or tested quite a few capacitors on this radio, mainly these over here. These capacitors are the same type and the type is this over here as the one that we have in there. These capacitors were absolutely spot on. There was absolutely no leakage that I could measure and I measured it using the uh, capacitance leakage tester that I built. I'll link uh, above for that project if you're interested. And I measured absolutely no leakage. And I thought, well, if I've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five caps that are absolutely spot on, then by common sense, that one should be fine as well. One less capacitor to change. So I decided to give it a go. And that's where I made my mistake. And the reason for that mistake is actually quite simple. The reason these caps are all in good condition is that they are never, these capacitors are never subjected to high voltage. This is the feedback circuit from the output transformer, from the secondary, from your audio. Comes through there, does a whole lot of tone shaping to get your hi-fi sound and your, and your bass boost and treble boost and treble cut. All that jazz happens along here, then goes to your volume pot. This is all low voltage stuff. There is no high voltage DC on there because it's isolated by other capacitors around here. So these caps were never stressed. Therefore, they're in perfect condition. That little bugger there has been sitting with a difference of quite a few hundred volts probably on it for its whole lifetime. So it's finally kicked the bucket or is kicking the bucket right now. And that's why we have a leakage condition over there. So let me show you in real life, what happens when we switch this on? I'm going to switch this on and I've got a meter measuring the cathode voltage, which according to the schematic says it should be about 6.3 volts. The grid voltage should be damn close to zero. So the other meter is going to measure the grid voltage and I'm going to switch it on, leave it for some time, probably fast forward some sections because this does take a little bit of time uh, so you don't sit there looking at a blank screen and we'll see what happens when we get this thing uh, warmed up because what really does happen is that this becomes worse as the circuit warms up. Anyway, let's have a look at that. See what's happening to the grid voltage? That grid voltage is receiving DC from the previous section and it's going up to 250 millivolts. 300. Four hundred. To change range, four hundred. And look what's happening to the cathode voltage. Now remember, that thing's supposed to be zero. It's almost one volt. It's going up to one volt. That thing is supposed to be six point something. Started off at six point something. It's now up to seven point two. The creep up is actually accelerating here. It's going up a lot faster than it was initially because the whole system is heating up. Now the grid is at 2 volts already. That's at 7.7. .7. Now what's happening is the grid is allowing the tube to pass more current through and that's increasing the uh, cathode voltage. However, this is acting as a feedback system because now the difference in voltage between that and that is still the controlling voltage 
for the current to go through the um, to go through the tube. So you've still got you're getting now eight minus uh, three. You've got about five volts. So this whole thing is becoming uncontrolled, and it'll get worse. As you can see, it's creeping up, and that's certainly creeping up like crazy. So the effect of that capacitor on the grid of the tube is that it is increasing the voltage to way, way, way beyond where it should be. And if I have any sense, I'm going to switch it off now because I don't want to damage my tube. That is a real life example of how a seemingly good capacitor can mess you up. And what's worse, let me switch that off. What's worse is that if you first test this, when you first uh, switch it on and power it up, everything looks hunky-dory. You will not notice it until that capacitor starts leaking slowly. And the reason it's uh, doing it slowly is because it's heating up as well. And it's just not holding back the DC voltage. So that, that capacitor is completely messed. And that would definitely ruin your day if you let it carry on. Anyway, just wanted to show you a real life practical example of uh, capacitor leakage. The thing to bear in mind here is if you've got a one mega ohm resistor to ground over here, all you need from that thing there to leak to get this thing to go up one volt is about one microamp. Think about it. If one microamp of current, which sounds like nothing, goes through there, what is the voltage at that point? The voltage has to increase because it is the current that's going to flow through that one mega ohm resistor. It's not going to flow into the grid necessarily because the grid is extra high impedance, but it will see a one mega ohm to ground. And therefore, if you've got one microamp, which is one times 10 to the minus six times one times 10 to the six, which is one mega ohm, you've got yourself one volt. So that will increase that by one volt. Two microamps, two volts. Three microamps, three volts. According to that num those numbers we were seeing there, the current started at zero, the leakage current, and it was going up by, you know, one, two, three. It was probably at about three microamps for that voltage to be seen as three volts over there. So change these guys out. Do not risk it. From now on, I don't care if it looks like a Miss Universe, I'm changing that bloody capacitor because it's now just uh, scary. And there's enough scary stuff in these uh, high voltage tube sets without having to add to the, to the mix. Hope that was informative. Look forward to seeing you again. Bye for now.